hip might be the best option. So in season two of Tour Sauce, we went to Scotland. It was the first time I'd ever been, and right away stepping off the plane in Edinburgh, I just felt this sense of contentment. Uh, I had this nostalgia that I couldn't quite place. Um, I'd never been to Scotland, and yet arriving there, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm back. So I get those same feelings walking around Old Mac. I feel at ease. I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I, I like the idea of recreating the Lido. The Lido was a public uh, resort facility. It was the first or second best course, depending on the list. You know, ahead of ahead of or behind, just one behind Pine Valley for the 20, throughout the 20s before it went bankrupt. So to recreate the Lido, the second best course, isn't that a winner? Even if it's in northern Canada, architecturally, it's going to be at least very interesting. And called Tamdo, who is a very knowledgeable guy, as you know, and said, what do you think of the Lido? He said, it's an interesting idea, interesting idea. And he came back 10 days later and said, in fact, Mike, it's a great idea, but the site you have won't fit it just the way it's, it should go. You'll have to redo it. And from what you said, you wanted to recreate the original. You didn't want to do a version of it. So why don't you hire us, there was his opening, to do something that C.B. McDonald would have done. Something, something that's uh, uh, real and ancient-like. So the question that Old Mac makes you think about is what would C.B. McDonald have created had the Oregon coast been his canvas? Tom Doak and Jim Urbina set about answering that question, and Old Mac was born in 2010. C.B. McDonald famously identified more than 20 different golf hole templates utilized across all the storied courses of Great Britain and Ireland. When he was building his courses here in the United States, he could go to essentially any tract of land and know that he could build really good golf holes if he based them on these templates. So it's no surprise uh, a course that is in honor of C.B. McDonald is going to have a lot of template holes, which Old Mac does. One thing I really like about these templates, the names are quite evocative. Uh, you have the Double Plateau, the Hog's Back, Sahara, the Alps, the Maiden, the Long, the Short. And so not only are they pretty descriptive of, of what the template is, but they, they conjure different fun images in your mind. Tron, did you bring your own looper? I did, I did. This is uh, probably the specialist here. <laughs> Actually, Randy left his muffin on the table. Yeah, I did. And a crow came and picked well, it up. Bill, uh, Randy once again. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, you got lots of uh, water to share. Uh. <laughs> Randy, how do you feel coming back here? Some demons, maybe? Uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of great feelings and a little bit of demons, too. Do you, do you want to explain to the people what happened last time we were out there? Oh, yeah. We had some monster days. I think we played, what, 36 plus preserve. 
uh, and then had a red eye out of Eugene that night. I forgot to drink any water. And I think I was like, just feeling that some anxiety too about this red eye and like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Like, how is this all gonna happen? So I'm walking to the bathroom and I get out of the dining room and I don't know if you've ever fainted, but it's just like that flushing feeling where like the blood is just like draining. And they say there's somebody that was standing over me. Like, oh man, are you okay? Oh, we gotta call an ambulance. And so with uh, Nurse Karen patch me up, we spent an extra night at Bandon, shout out. Uh, the Bandon folks were very gracious. Got to see a little bit of the town the next morning, which, you know, truth be told, it was kind of kind of cool. Walk the labyrinth. Well, listen, we're gonna put that behind us. So yeah, so, so that was the last Bandon trip. I'm not here to convince you Old Mac is the best course at Bandon, but I do want to explain why it's my favorite. To play Old Mac, is to take a step back in time. It's an opportunity to not only experience golf as it once was and has been for centuries, but it's an opportunity for a lot of people to play styles of holes that just aren't as abundant here in the United States as they are across the pond. I think that's pretty neat. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, you too. Hang on. Down, down. That might be the best option. That's pretty sporty. All right, we're out. now. At the ghost tree, that bare Port Orford cedar, uh, it is the most photogenic tree, I believe, maybe the most photogenic aspect uh, of all of Bandon. It has a very clear purpose. When you're standing below at the third tee box, you need some type of reference point, uh, hitting a blind drive over the dune. And the ghost tree offers exactly that. It helps quite literally guide you from tee to fairway. And I think there's a metaphor there about how it serves to kind of connect the game from present day to the past. Okay, so it's kind of decision time, especially for you. You could either bunt that little 21 or that 22 degree, just a little right of that tree, and you'll be fine. But being that it's downwind, it's drivable, right? So if you want to hit driver, you're going to go just left of the tree and just let it go. It's kind of it's time to make a decision. We're going to go with the right, dog. Let's just let's go for it. it. Yeah, well, let's nice, easy swing. If it's a fade, like that, do that's you a have a nice, normal, a nice, easy swing? I do, yeah. Okay. I've been working on it. I've been working on a second serve. I've been working hard. Yeah. Okay, Can. You make a climb up over the dune past the ghost tree and out before you is a vast expanse. You can see many of the holes of Old Mac. Off in the distance to the west, you can hear the ocean. There's a near constant symphony of waves crashing. There's a sea breeze that you can feel on your face. You can smell the salty air. At that moment, I think it's hard to succumb to life's everyday stresses. God, birdie time! Woo! Woo! TC! How about that? God, that's, that is fun to watch, man. Solid? 
for Eagle up there. Rob! <laughs> Brandy! Come down. It's been a great place to putt from. Oh. Right over my mind. How about that? Good. This looks really good. Good boy. Good right. boy. Easy game. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey! <laughs> The seventh hole is a crescendo of sorts. You spend the first six and a half holes, uh, really, uh, once you crest the, the dune at the ghost hole, you hear the ocean, you can feel the breeze, you know it's over there, and it's not until you're walking up the hill to the seventh green site, finally the Pacific Ocean is revealed, and it is just a spectacular sight. It's my favorite walk at Bandon. I urge everybody, please enjoy it. If you ever don't know where to find me, check at the turn stand. Sitting in those Adirondacks. That's where I'll be. <laughs> it's a bit of a letdown, leaving the seventh green. You, you turn back inland. You do have some really cool templates ahead of you. The eighth is a Beeritz with the swale in the middle of the green. There's a cape hole. The road hole, of course, after the famous 17th at St. Andrews. There's even a Redan. In my opinion, that, that stretch of six holes from eight through 13 is the most challenging stretch of the course. I don't think it's the sexiest, but you do have to lock in and execute some good golf shots. Hit three. Great shot in there, man. That was about as enjoyable for nine holes. Absolutely splendid. Putting a little wimpy, but playing uh, slowed everything down, kind of told everything inside to shut the fuck up and just like keep it all quiet. And it's going pretty well.
it's tucked. You got 120, but again, it's it's up into the breeze. So okay. I think it's that nine. I love the 14th for the payoff. It's a, it's a shortish uphill par four. It's the maiden. You make a climb to this small green, uh, yet there's a lot of slope. There's a big dune right behind it. And it provides a couple of things that I really love. The first, it, it affords many different ways to try to get your ball close to the hole. second you stand up there and you turn back to the west and you see again most of old mac there below you all the holes and it's framed by the pacific ocean it's a gorgeous view and one i urge people to enjoy <laughs> tc how's it going it's going well i'm only three off the quota okay i uh, talked to those guys they're not not yeah, doing what are they well. they're Randy's despondent. Really? Sally and DJ didn't didn't exactly seem like they had grooving. So um, you should be right in the mix. You're what? I've got to get. I'm at 25 of 32. So I got seven points to go get. Okay. I had a tough break there. I was going for four. Ended up with one. Got a little aggressive on my three putt there. Uh, but I like it, man. We're playing. We're keeping the course in front of us. TC's so. managing his game really yeah. well. Yeah. And I think it's time for us to shut up and you can just enjoy the view. Maybe, maybe the leader of the round. I can't find the club. What are you at? Minus three. Pocket on 15. He might already have it. He might have pit. He might be in an early pit. He's got a free pit. Pit the fastest lap. He's <laughs> trying to conserve energy. The 16th hole is the Alps. It is a tremendous version of an Alps hole, in my opinion. What makes it an Alps, there's a large dune placed right in the middle of the fairway, which leaves a blind approach shot for most golfers. It's a very fun shot to hit. Uh, it requires a combination of execution and faith. We need some points. I like the six iron up the right side. So you see, playing for points. I love it. You mind if I go seven, just a little shorter? And, yeah. okay. I don't mind at all. Let's just keep it up the left side, like at the at the bell there. Should have listened to Squid. Come on. That's, that's the text. Oh, Come on, that. The 17th is a risk reward par five. It's the type of hole that can swing matches, as it did for us.
17 T. Neil, how we feeling? Feeling good. I'm, uh, I'm an extension of uh, of squid. Just kind of point me, the, point me in the right direction. You're the vessel. Yeah, and I'm just keeping everything kind of quiet, keeping the course in front of me. I got three points left with two holes to play. So I also have three points left yep. with two holes to play. Great. That draw. Perfect, dude. <laughs> He got it. Big putt. Huge putt there. Oh, great swing, man. Great swing. Nice touch, TC. I think I would go like maybe just inside left of it. Okay. And yeah, it's down in that first part of it and then it finishes up. So. Do it. Ow! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Combo! Let's go! Did we say what for this six or eight? Eight, baby. Eight. Let's go. When it was makeable, we knew it was makeable. Me? God, I hope you can hear me. The 18th hole, the home hole, is called Punch Bowl. It's all in the name. The green is a gigantic punch bowl encircled by mounds on all sides. And it requires, I think, you know, my all three aspects of, of what makes golf fun. Creativity and how you're going to play the shot, where you're going to land it, execution, and then you need a little luck. And, you know, all, all three of those things are placed alongside each other there at the 18. Oh, that could have been big. Yeah, great putt, man. Good finish. That did, that slammed the door at Old Mac. So it was cool. It was really fun to get the win. Um, and that wasn't even a major, you know, but it kind of put me on a good trajectory for the afternoon. It's hard because I think that the beauty and the essence of Old Mac, it's not so much in, in the words and it's not so much in the design, it's not so much in the difficulty, it's not so much even in the views. It's this feeling that it conjures inside you. Um, I said at the top, you know, Scotland gave me a sense of ease and belonging and comfort. And I feel that same way going around Old Mac. And it's hard to give voice to that, to your friends, to your buddies, as you're sitting around having beers and, and talking about why you like this course or that course, and you know specifically why you think Old Mac is the best. And, and honestly, I, I think that's the beauty of Old Mac, is there's something ethereal about it. There's something that you can't quite put into words. And for me, that's what makes it special.